Ladies and gentlemen, we are coming to you live from the Ted Reeve bubble at Fresh and Furious 2017. My name's Trouble T and I am joining you from the bubble. It's 11.01, we're just about to get started here in our first match between The Thicket from Forest City Derby Girls and a conglomeration of a few different derby leagues going under the name today of Quad City Hot Rods. Uh, they are comprised of the Belleville Bombshells, the Northumberland Roller Girls, Lindsay Roller Derby, GTA Roller Girls, and the Peterborough Derby League. So the referees are at the center of the oval just sorting out the administrative side of what we're going to go through. We've got 20 minute bouts all day today, tournament style, and we'll be, oh, We'll be getting to the action very soon. I've heard the whistle. Teams are about to line up at the jam line for our first jam of the day. Hello, everyone. I was just uh, jumping in here to help out my fellow friends. Uh, my name is Professor Rex from Royal City, and I'll be helping out on the stream today. There's the whistle, and we're underway. You're watching live streaming action we've got the thicket in the neon green and wearing purple is the quad city hot rods who have taken lead jam position blockers are setting up it looks like the thickest jammer was a little bit confused of whether she was lead or if she got a penalty uh did decide to call off the jam it ends the jam before any score, or actually, no, it looks like three points were given to the Quad City Hot Rods. And that was Gambullet as lead jammer. Wearing the star for Quad City. We're lining up now for our second jam. Little late toss of the pivot pinny, but it looks like Quad City's ready to roll. Both jammers are on the line waiting for the whistle. Quad City starting this jam uh, down one blocker. A little bit of a disadvantage, but the thickest jammer is making a go of it. Quad City with lead jam. Looks like Blue Brawls takes the lead jam. Yeah, there was a mess of skaters on the uh, on the concrete there, and Blue Brawls managed to get through the, the thicket of thicket skaters and Quad City hot rods. Blue Brawls hits that pack hard. It looks like she did pick up one point. Oh, uh, actually, no, it is the Thicket picking up one point on the back end there. Blue Brawls, unfortunately, called off the jam a little bit too late and did not pick up points. Uh, we also have a skater down on the track. That looks like Thicket skater number 29, Buster Brown, and all the skaters are taking a knee now. Yeah, it looked like Quad City Skater did enter the pack a little hot. Um, I'm not sure if that's what caused the injury or if it was from just uh, falling. If you're joining us online and you're not too far away from East York, why not swing by Ted Reeve Arena for, I believe it's $20, you can get a pass for uh, bouts throughout the entire day. We're going to be here uh, well into the evening as we work through the bracket up to the finals. Um, we've also got tons of sponsors, tons of vendors here uh, in the arena. Matches going on in both the arena and the bubble all day. So come on down and join us if you're close by. Uh, derby action until the, until the sun goes down. Yeah, that's right. Um and it's a beautiful day outside as well. It's uh, roughly 24 degrees, I think, or that's what I'm told it's going to be later. So if you are uh, walking around the downtown uh, beaches area, please come by the Ted Reeves and Bubble and join us for the fun. Um, the skater doesn't look like it's too serious of an injury. The paramedics are out there currently from Spectrum One. Um, at, at all derby events, we bring out paramedics just to ensure that everyone's safe and has someone that can come out and look after you if there is a potential for injury. Um, it is also a part of the rules. Uh, you, you have to have some paramedics in the building. Yeah, that's right, Rex. And uh, 
I've, I've heard it said that the paramedics are the most important people uh, in the building because, as you say, you can't go on if they're not, uh, if they're not present. And having been at this a while, as I know you have, uh, Professor Rex, has seen a fair number of injuries because um, it is a full contact sport. There's no way around it. So uh, it's very important to have them here. Lots of knee sprains, lots of ankle injuries, uh, lots of hard hits. So. It's, uh, it's wonderful to have medical staff on site who are able to help the skaters. That's true, and, the, and these, these skaters do train hard uh, for almost 12 months of the year before this tournament, and they're essentially training at what is called the minimum skills, the WFTDA minimum skills, uh, and they all have to pass that in order to be able to skate just for the insurance purposes. Um, and all these things, all these all these steps are put in place to make sure that everyone is is uh, safe and able to play this quite intense contact sport. That's right, and you can hear the applause in the background as a skater does uh, leave the track under her own power, uh, cleaning up a little bit of the the sweat, the blood, sweat, and tears from the center of the track. And skaters are lined up, and they're ready for uh, only the third jam of the game. We've got 18 minutes, 19 seconds still on the clock. We're in the just the starting time of uh, the starting moments of this game. Quad City Hot Rods up three to one over the thicket. Just a little backstory from the Quad City Hot Rods. It is a group of five roller derby leagues, and they only have ten players here currently. It's a quite it's a quite short roster, so it'll be interesting to see if they do get out of this game with a win, how far they can go and can carry on with the uh, stamina and endurance that you need for an entire tournament like this. But it's important to note that their coaching staff is, is incredibly experienced, incredibly dedicated, so it will be interesting to see uh, how they come together. Quad City's picked up lead jam, but they've also picked up a penalty, so they're a little shorthanded on the blocking side. But Cricket goes ripping right through the pack, despite being shorthanded, now by two blockers. But uh, their jammer, Cricket, has already ripped right through the pack and is posting some points to the board. And it looks like both teams are having trouble keeping the packs together. Um, the referees are signaling no pack, but I'm not sure if um, if they're quite aware of where they need to be sometimes. These skaters have only been involved in the sport for 12 months, so some errors do happen in, uh, in the gameplay. Uh, looks like Temper Tantrum is being instructed to go back onto the track because, oh, she can now report to the box because there is one player from the Quad City on the track now to make the pack actually work. And as we've been discussing that, Cricket, the, the jammer, has just been tearing through the pack, posting points, but she's followed closely behind by uh, the Night. Pickett's jammer, number 15. Nice offensive block from the Quad City's, or Quad City Hot Rods pivots, uh, Gambulet. And there's Cricket taking it to the inside around the, oh, she just got bumped out of bounds and has to go to the back of the pack. As uh, Gambolet definitely looks like she's uh, skated for a little while, uh, possibly some other sports background. She is really taking it to the thickets, blockers, and opposing jammers. This has been a major jam. Just look at the points that have been posted already so far. 27 points that Cricket has posted, and the Thicket, not to be outdone, have already posted 12 points. So that is a major, major scoring jam for both teams. And as we look at the final tally, it looks like Thicket have picked up three more. So that jam is now 27 to 15, with your total score 30 to 16 in favor of Quad City. Yeah, that's right. When both jammers go to the box or one jammer doesn't get lead jam, then it does create a two minute jam, which is the maximum amount of time one jam can go on. And when that happens, usually a lot of points do go up on, both, on the scoreboard for both teams. The referees are just taking a quick uh, official timeout to make sure that they have all of their, uh, all of the, pr the things in place. Uh, the sport is in, uh, changes rapidly and quickly, which is why there is usually seven referee crew to make sure that all things are working properly. And aside from the referees, we've got lots of non-skating officials as well on the track, at center track, manning the, uh, the penalty bench area. But we've heard the whistle now, the skaters are lined up, and we're getting ready to uh, start the fourth jam of this game with 15.44 left on the clock. Uh, 
Oh, a hard hit. Hard hit from Bukowski. Sends, the, uh, sends Red Rebel. I believe she had a high block penalty for that hit, but it did help slow down the jammer enough to, even despite losing lead jam, the thickets are being chased very quick, very rapidly by the Quad City, Quad City jammer. And Quad City jammer uh, number 43, Vanna Helsing, took a big slide outside of the track, but she's back up on her skates back up around the pack and posting points. Both both jammers come to the pack picking up four points each. It looks like the thickets are content to run this jam just to put some points on the board in hopes that they can stop the Quad City Jammer. They cannot. Van Helsing comes through for another four points. I believe they outscored the thickets on that jam despite not having the lead jam. Yeah, that's correct. Nine to four. Quad City wins that jam. Yeah, we did see another uh, five points there up on the board just as Red Rebel got pushed to the inside of the track and she tried calling off the jam, but it wasn't soon enough. And that actually sent Red Rebel uh, to the penalty bench. She was the jammer for Thicket, and that means that the uh, Quad City Hot Rods are going to start this jam uh, in a power jam situation. Uh, they'll have the only jammer out on the track and they'll be the only team able to score any points until Red Rebels penalty has been served. That's correct. Another quick official timeout for the referees. Phantom Slim, the, the crew head for this game, is talking to Jax, uh, just making sure that all things, or at least letting Jax know uh, what is going on. Uh, it's good to have a good communication between the refs and the coaches and captains of all teams. Uh, the referees are there to you know, to make sure that the game is being played fairly and safely and in a timely manner. And in the spirit of this event, some of the, uh, as we mentioned already, as uh, Professor Rex mentioned already, the skaters are all relatively new. That's the name of the event, Fresh and Furious. This is the fresh meet, the fresh skaters, but also some of the officials, uh, referees and non-skating officials uh, included in that, are also new to those roles. They may be skaters or former skaters who have uh, wanted to expand their knowledge of the of the game. So some of them are new. A uh, little extra administration might be involved in, in getting the game rolling. But as it stands, we've got the official timeout. We're reviewing some penalties, but we've heard the whistle. We're ready to get started. 39 to 22 is your score. Quad City Hot Rods over the thicket. Yeah, it looks like they had to put a couple extra players for the Quad City into the box. Two are sitting and one standing for the Quad City. They have been into some penalty trouble, so let's let's see if it, it does not affect them because they're still on a power jam. They do have lead, and they have lead in the score as well. They've only got one blocker and, uh, and their jammer. Thicket has no jammer and three blockers, so it is a very, very slim, uh, slim population on the track at the moment. That's Although a very Quad big hit City's from Cataclysm on number... Two, three, one, three. That's Gambolet, but she got up really quickly and pushed her way through the pack for lead jam. Now it's coming around for the scoring pass, and does pick up a very quick five-point pass. That is uh, a grand slam, the first grand slam on this, or actually the second grand slam on, the, on this jam. And we've seen uh, skaters coming out of the penalty bond, penalty area. Red Rebel is back out, so uh, there is a jammer now on the track for the thicket. She's having a little bit of trouble uh, finding a way through Quad City's blockers. A big hit there from Justice Prevails. So that would be a, a third, this is a, now the fourth scoring pass. Uh, with Red Rebel coming out of the box, she has just made her first pass through the pack, so she's eligible to score now. It's already 20 points on this jam for Quad City, and the jam is over. So with 13 minutes left in the bout, the Quad City is up as the score climbs 63 to 22 that was a 24 to 0 jam that's a huge jam it's it's hard sometimes as a team to see those points go up on the board and trying to come out and win the next jam but that is the most important you can do thing you can do as a team is forget that that jam happened the next jam is a new jam and try to win back jams as for the rest of the game there is still 12 minutes and 30 seconds on this clock it is still anyone's game and in these short 20-minute games, uh, you've got to make the most of situations, as we saw Quad City do there, making the very most that they, I think they really could have. Out Quad of City's pivot picking up a clockwise block quickly there. It did spring the, the thickest jammer, number... Lean and mean, I lean saw. Lean and mean. I, I, and she's approaching the back of the pack again. Let's see uh, if she can get something rolling. 
for Thicket, and she does. And the Just Thicket getting do, through the path. The right Thicket there. doing exactly sorry, the Thicket doing exactly what they needed to do is pick up and put up points in the next jam after that big 24 point jam. A little oh. jammer on jammer action here in the turn one. But Vanna Helsing wipes out and wasn't able to lay the hit that she wanted to on Lean and Mean. Lean and Mean running right into the back of the pack, and Vanna Helsing tries to take it to the inside. Wipes out again, but stays in bounds. She's back up and picks up five points. It looked like she may have picked up a cutting penalty, but the OPR on the outside said that it was good. So it was over Terrence. Still one minute potentially left in this jam. Vanna Helsing gets through the pack, but takes a hard fall. She is back up, lean and mean, hits the back of the pack and just manages to stay inside for a moment before being bumped out by number five, Cricket, for the Quad City Hot Rods. Lean and mean calls out the jam there, keeping the score nine to nine. It does pull the ratio up. A little points on the end there. So uh, actually 12 to 9 for the Thickets. It does pull that ratio qu closer, but the Thickets really have to start putting up points on the board and not allowing Quad City to put their own up. Um, if they continue on this trend, it will be quite difficult to actually close this gap if they, if they keep trying to score in this, this fashion. Yeah, we're just approaching the halfway point of this bout, so they need to turn something around really quickly. With these 20 minute bouts, they're very short. If you get behind early, really got to work to uh, to take to yeah, take uh, back some points. Blue Brawls again with the lead jam. She's already coming up around to turn, turn one for her first scoring pass of this jam. Let's see if she can make it through. And she's got a power jam now as Gnarly Quinn, who is a jammer for the thicket, picks up a penalty and uh, is skating back. So Blue Brawls picking up five points there. Power jam situation for the Quad City Hot Rods, looking to extend their lead even further. Blue it Brawls is. passes the pack with no problem there. That's true. It, and she's already picked up 10 points on this jam. And there's still likely 15 seconds left on that power jam. Uh, penalty minutes in this game are only 30 seconds long. Um, you can pick up multiple penalties to extend that. But if you just pick up one, they are only 30 seconds long. So they are over quite quickly. But when you are on the power jam, it is likely that you can put up points as Blue Balls Blue Brawls is right now. Yeah, I saw some great blocking there from Quad City, just clearing a path for Blue Brawls. Gnarly Quinn is out of the box now and looking to see what she can do. And just as Blue Brawls was scoring her last pass, she unfortunately hit someone in the back and is going to the penalty box for a back block. The power jam is swung the other way, so hopefully the Thickets can at least put up some points on this jam before it ends. Gnarly Quinn had a little bit of difficulty getting through the pack, but uh, in a couple quick steps was able to make it through. That's only her first pass through the pack, though, so she didn't pick up any points. She's now eligible to score, and let's see what she can do. That's true, and Blue Brawls would have some pocket points in the penalty box right now, so when she comes on the track, she has already scored those points. All right, if you're watching online, then you already know that we've got the scoreboard now on the stream with uh, the timer showing uh, time remaining in the jam as well as time remaining in the bout. It does say period one, but there is only one period in this bout. So with eight and a half minutes to go, we've got uh, the jam being called as over 19 points on the board for Quad City, three for the thicket, and Quad City just continues to dominate on the scoreboard. It is... Uh if you get lead jam, score some points and go to the box as a jammer, it isn't as detrimental as going to the box in your first pass. Um, at the very least, the Quad City jammer already has scored points, went to the box with points in hand, and then was able to come out and continue to score. Uh, unfortunately, the thickets went to the box without score having their first pass, which makes it quite difficult to put up points. Even though you have time on the board, it's just that extra pass makes it you know, it takes that extra bit of time to put those points up. We've got a timeout here now being called by the Thicket. And just looking back at some of my notes here, we just had a 19-point jam for Quad City. We've earlier had a 24-0 to 0 jam. And before that, a 27-15 to 15 jam, a slimmer margin, but still heavy-duty points that they're posting uh, jam after jam. So they're really running away with this, as you can see on the scoreboard. 90-37, to 37, only... Uh, 11 and a half minutes into the bout. Uh, that's a, a pretty heavy offensive onslaught that we've seen. It's from true. Quad in, it, City. in this 
fresh tournament, if you have jammers that can uh, skate and get through and are tough, it's quite difficult for a team to keep up. If you have jammers that can do that, and if you have a blocking team that can play defense well as, as well, you're, you're a pretty tough team. It looks like Quad City has both of those going for them. The thickets have been marred by a little bit of uh, penalty trouble during this game, especially to their jammers. And it looks like it looks like the jammer again is going to the penalty box for a forearm call. Another power jam for the Quad City Hot Rods. And just to expand on what you were saying before there, Cricket, what a skater, ripping right through the pack. But just to expand on what you were saying, it's the knowledge of, the, aside from skating skill, knowledge of the rules is is really beneficial in this as well. We've seen a lot of delays and missed opportunities because of confusion and uh, and just trying to sort out where skaters are supposed to be. That's right, Cricket does look like she skates like a hockey player, so it's possible that she has been involved in other sports, especially on the skates before. But she's already picked up 15 points on this jam. That is incredible. All three passes, she has been barely touched by the defense. The thickets really have to talk about how to get their defense together to make sure that the jammer at least has a bit of trouble getting through, just like that last pass right now. We've seen Dominatrix now uh, has served her penalty. She's back out on the track, but she's got a lot of work to do uh, and won't get a chance to do it as Cricket calls off the jam after posting what I believe to be 19 points. So there's another 19 to zero run, back to back 19 to zero jams. If you can see the scoreboard on the stream at home, just know that the 19 points that went up for the thickets uh, were for the Quad City Hot Rods. So the score is gonna be adjusted now. I think they're trying to correct that quickly. Yeah, Phantom Slim just took an official timeout to make sure that uh, all things are correct. And that 19 point jam will push Quad City over the century mark. That'll get them to 109 if my math is correct. And there we are, 109 to 37. With a score of 109, it is, it is impressive that the Thickets still have put up 37 points. Usually at this tournament, if a team is putting up close to 100 or more than 100 points, the other team has trouble to score. But both teams have shown that they can put up points, so the Thickets just have to settle a little bit down on the defense, get their penalty trouble in check, and they can maybe get come back in this game. Well, speaking of penalty trouble, it's another power jam off the line for the Quad City Hot Rods as uh, Thickets Jammer is in the box. So they're definitely not going in the right direction so far. Vanna Helsing gets a huge hit, an incredible hit right in front of the uh, right in front of our table. From uh, that was hardcore, hardcore hazard. It was that was a really well timed clean hit. It was right to the sternum, but it was in the engagement zone. It did look like it was potentially a penalty, but it was 100% clean. And to Vanna Helsing's credit, she looked stunned she got back up on her skates and ripped right around the pack and picked up points and just went around the pack again so she's uh doesn't seem too phased by that massive crash that we just witnessed again this is a tough sport and people do get hit hard so and again dominatrix to the penalty box it looks like for a cutting call this time the thickest jammers have essentially given quad city hot rods all of the power jams and all the ability to score these points. If the thickets want to do well in this tournament, they're going to have to figure out how to knock one of the penalty box as their jammers. Van Helsing again goes inside, outside, picks up a handful of points, hardly bumped on that pass. Uh, she has paid her dues already, though, in this jam after that hit from, uh, from Hardcore Hazard. She and once again, right through the pack. Unbelievable. Uh, Van Helsing definitely has potential to score, or at least tie. No, she has potential to score the most points in this jam so far. And if she did land that pass, then she effectively does. Let's see how many points she'll put up in this jam. The jam clock is winding down. We're at six seconds, and there's the call. Yeah, 529 points. That's a massive jam. That is the biggest scoring jam in this game so far to Van Helsing. Yeah, that's the, the highest scoring jam and holding uh, the previous record for Quad City was 27, but in that jam, 15 points were scored by the Thicket. So this is by far, uh, by five points, the greatest margin that Quad City has uh, has scored in a single jam. Although, excuse me, the Thicket did post four more points in that jam. So a 25-point variance, and that is still the highest variance that we've seen in a jam in this bout. As we are now at the four-minute mark, the 
the dying uh, 20% of this bout. Looks like the Quad City Hot Rods have gone to the penalty box and sent the Thickets on a power jam. Hopefully the Thickets can put up a decent amount of points here to get some retribution. Yeah, leave this with uh, their heads held high. Going to learn a few lessons. This is the first bout of the day, so we'll see how they improve and, and what they learn from this going forward. Thickets opting to do a passive offense for this power jam, and it does effectively work. It looks like the Thickets jammer can just go, but she decides to go back and try to pick up that last point before exiting the pack. It's a nice five-point grand slam for... Sass will kill you. Sass will kill you. Thank you very much. And the Thicket do have a, a nice fan base right around turn two. So they were pretty thrilled to see this power jam. They're all on their feet now, clapping and cheering. Uh, five points posted by the Thicket. So let's... Unfortunately, Sass will kill you. Was, wasn't able to pick up points on the just before the uh, jam end at the end there. So the clock is still ticking. Less than three minutes to go. Skaters are lining up. 138 to 46 is your score. I'm not sure if you've got the score on the feed, but uh, you can see it in the background. The scoreboard is in the background. 138 to 46 for Quad City. Looks like blue balls again for Quad City. Quad City Hot Rods. Takes the lead jam from the thickets. Marley Quinn gets bumped a few times, but she's made it around for uh, for the thicket. Blue Brawls approaches the back of the pack, gets a little help from her blockers, but not enough, and calls off the jam. One point. Yeah, that was a good call by Blue Brawls. Staying safe. Every time you do call off the jam, 30 seconds runs off the game clock. This game of roller derby is all about points differential and time. So anytime you can put points on the board more than your other team and run that clock down is, is, is a good thing. So a minute and a half left on the clock, which is still ticking 139 to 46 is the score. Quad City has dominated this throughout. But uh, the day is definitely not over for the Thicket. They've got probably learned a lot in this bout. Uh, and they've picked up lead jam as lean and mean on one skate is able to get through the pack. Gets a little instruction from the bench. And runs right through the pack. And that's the body picking up a penalty for Quad City. She was a jammer. Yeah, so Lean and Mean is now on a power jam for the Thicket. And this Let's is see if they can end this in style. And this is exactly what the Thicket needs. They had already scored four points on the previous pass. And now they're on a power jam and already have nine points. So hopefully they can put up a decent amount of points so they can walk away from this game with a little bit more confidence. Certainly a big differential as well between the, the jam clock and the game clock. So. Uh, 30 seconds left on the game clock and Lean and Mean just keeps rocking and rolling here has picked up 15 uh, sorry 14 points on this jam so far a little bit uh, a little bit gassed as we're at the end of the bout but certainly a nice way for the thicket to end this bout that's correct and if you're following at home despite the period clock being at five seconds left the, it goes by the jam clock so the thicket can run this jam for another 30 seconds even though the period clock is now over there is technically still another 30 seconds in the game. Power jam is over as the body comes off the bench. It looks like she thinks she's getting another penalty, but she's not. It puts her at the back of the pack and unable to uh, really do any damage on the scoreboard. And the Thicket are really running away with this jam. What a great ending for them. Uh, as we have 10 seconds left in the jam, Lean and Mean with 19 points. Okay. Lean and Mean look gas going on that last jam, but still found a way to pick up the last scoring pass. Great, great job. Ending with a 23-point jam for Lean and Mean. That was great for the Thickets. Lots of positivity for their team going into the next game. Really wonderful. So the unofficial final score posted on the board right now, 143-69 to 69 for Quad City. And a really exciting and uh, 
and good finish for the thicket, hoping to carry that momentum through to their next bout and forget the first uh, 15 minutes or, or, or maybe 18 minutes yeah. of this bout. That's correct. Uh, the difference in this game it was definitely Quad City uh, Hot Rod's ability to keep the pack together and understanding of the game. It does look like they're very well coached and they know the sport of roller derby quite, quite well. If you have those things in place, you're going to do well in this tournament. Quad City Hot Rods for the win, 143.69. I am Professor Rex. Thank you very much. And I am Trouble T signing off. Stay with us. Lots and lots and lots of derby action yet to come. <laughs>